on live, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. Good, a Good afternoon. Welcome to the Monetary Policy Stance Media Briefing. Our speakers for today are Monetary Board Chairman and Banca Central ng Pilipinas Governor Nestor A. Espinilla Jr. and Deputy Governor for the Monetary and Economic Sector Diwa C. Gunigundo. Governor Espinilla will now read the statement. At its uh, meeting on monetary policy today, the Monetary Board decided to increase the interest rate on the BSP's overnight reverse repurchase uh, facility or RRP by 25 basis points to 3.25%. The interest rates on the overnight lending and deposit facilities were likewise raised accordingly. In deciding to raise the policy interest rate, the Monetary Board noted that the latest forecasts have further shifted higher, indicating that inflation pressures could become more broad-based over the policy horizon. While inflation momentum has started to slow or slow down, inflation may still breach the inflation target range of 3% plus minus one percentage point for 2018, due primarily to temporary supply side factors. Nevertheless, the inflation is expected to return inside the target range in 2019. The Monetary Board assessed that the balance of risks to the inflation outlook continues to lean toward the upside with price pressures emanating from possible adjustments in transport fares, utility rates, and wages. And given these considerations, the Monetary Board believes that a timely increase in the BSP's policy interest rate will help arrest potential second-round effects by tempering the buildup in inflation expectations. The Monetary Board observed the strong domestic demand allows some scope for a measured adjustment in the policy rate without adversely affecting the country's economic growth momentum. In assessing the stance of monetary policy, the Monetary Board also emphasizes that it continues to closely monitor domestic macroeconomic conditions as well as the evolving global economic environment including the potential impact of the ongoing normalization of monetary policy in some advanced economies. Looking ahead, the BSP stands ready to undertake further policy action as necessary to ensure the achievement of its price and financial, financial stability objectives. And that's the end of my statement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before we proceed to the Q&A, may we ask the Deputy Governor for the inflation forecast for 2018 and 2019. Thank you very much, uh, Alicia. <clears throat> the, uh, our media friends um, <clears throat> will recall that uh, on March 22, uh, for 2018 and 2019, we announced that uh, our forecasts were 3.9 and 3% respectively. At today's meeting of the Monetary Board, uh, the forecast is now 4.6% for 2018 and for 2019, 3.4%. 3 there are reasons for these um, uh, forecasts. So <clears throat> one will note that uh, there's an increase from 39 to 4.6% for 2018. One of the points that uh, the Monetary Board considered was the impact 
of, um, first of all, the expected gain in domestic economic activity starting the, the second quarter and the fourth quarter. Of course, we've seen that in the first quarter of 2018, we saw the real GDP registering a growth rate of 6.8%. Uh, we also expect some base effects between May to August of 2018. And of course, um, one can also see that on the basis of uh, the numbers that have been made available uh, previously, crude oil has uh, gone up uh, versus the 2017 levels. Uh, and we expect that um, in June 2000, in, uh, in uh, uh, 2018, we, we will continue to see elevated readings of oil prices at about $70 uh, per barrel. Uh, we also expect uh, to see some uh, adjustment in the minimum wage in October of 2018. Of course, our media friends will remember that uh, we have um, considered an 18 peso or 3.6% uh, average uh, increase in the uh, minimum wage uh, in the in the baseline forecast of uh, the BSP, uh, anything beyond that is uh, a risk. But we expect that, uh, based on the um, experiences in the past, the actual wage adjustment that was approved by the regional productivity wage boards were much lower compared to the original petitions of the labor uh, sector. Finally, the excise tax on tobacco products by about uh, 2 pesos and 50 centavos per pack uh, to begin in July 2018, we'll continue to see uh, 2018 at an elevated uh, level. For 2019, again, we will see that uh, as in, the, in March 22 forecast, inflation is expected to return to target uh, consistent uh, level of 3.4%. We are seeing some tempering in crude oil from 67.84 to about 64.81. So that will help uh, uh, provide some tempering in, 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 in inflation. World non-oil import uh, price growth uh, is also expected to uh, come down from uh, 5.6 in 2018 to 0.5%. And of course, the negative base effects uh, will continue between January to August of 2019. So those are the numbers, 4.6 uh, for 2018, 3.4 for 2019, and the reasons uh, have been cited. Thank you very much. We now open the floor to questions. Before you ask your question, please identify yourself and your organization. Hi, Gov. Uh, Clarissa Batida from Bloomberg. Sir, you said uh, you can under. Are you ready to undertake further policy action as necessary? Um, how much increase? How much more increase would it take to put inflation back to target in 2019? How many more increases are we looking at? And what are the factors that are you closely watching uh, in the coming weeks and months? It's, it's too soon to uh, make that kind of a uh, statement in terms of how many more times and 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 yeah. So you're asking by what magnitude would be the total increase in interest rate. So as you know, we've always asserted that the BSP is evaluating the information flow, and we are guided by the the data. So there are several things that the BSP is looking out for, and Didi uh, Ginfundo um, outlined to you some of the also the risk areas that can uh, affect our forecast, including external factors such as oil. And what we are uh, looking at is how these developments feed into inflation expectations, which is actually a driver of second round effects on uh, what, are, what we see to be temporary supply side factors. But you know, um, there is uncertainty in the sense that the first quarter shows that the economy is uh, growing quite strongly, uh, higher than uh, expectations, but definitely stronger than uh, than last year and uh, quite strong compared to other countries. In an environment where demand is uh, quite strong, 
uh, you can rule out that some of the temporary supply shocks, supply side shocks, can feed into uh, second on the inflationary pressure. So we are watching out for these things. Yes, sir. Let me just clarify, uh, Claire. No, <clears throat> uh, in 2019, inflation is back to uh, two to four percent. Our our reading for 2019 is three point four percent. So in terms of moving again the inter the interest rate, I think at this point, minus any of the risks materializing, uh, the 25 basis point increase in today's meeting of the monetary board, I think is sufficient to keep the the uh, inflation reading at 3.4 percent uh, for 2019. In short, we're back to. Uh, the target in place, the tar target consistent path up to the four. Any more questions? Uh, yes, Lee. Um, Lee Chepongian from Manila Bulletin. Uh, Gov, um, uh, since uh, you raised the uh, uh, rates now by 25 basis points, does that mean that uh, the you you saw a second round? Uh, Evidence of second round impact by the second quarter, by the second half of this year, and by raising the interest rates, you've tempered that uh, risk, so far as you can see. But then the 2019 uh, target is not at risk at all. As I said, right now, the decision of the monetary board is conditioned up on the latest developments that we saw. To your first question, we continue to see elevated risk. And the monetary board basically decided that the time to act is now. And of course, the expect our, our own expectation is that by acting right now, in, a, in our view, a timely manner, we will avoid the necessity of further strong action down the road. But that's not to say that that's not an option. Uh, I think, if anything, uh, in moving the policy rates now, it's also a signal that the BSP, the monetary board, has not forgotten its policy instrument, that it will move it when it's necessary. And uh, your other point regarding the 2019 uh, inflation target, uh, or sorry, uh, forecast, um, again, uh, as DG Diwa uh, pointed out, just based on our, uh, on our best reading of what the situation would like to be in 2019. Right now, the data that's available to us suggests that we will be able to get back on target by 2019 as the uh, as the mainly supply side shock uh, supply side shocks uh, that are factored in get dissipated um, yes um, if you look at the inflation outlook by 2019 it should be back to the target um, consistent path. In fact, in terms of the momentum based on month-on-month -on -month, uh, reading, headline inflation, again using 2012 base year, has been coming down from 0 0.9 in January to 0 0.7 in February, and then uh, in March and April at 0.5%. In other words, uh, there seems to be some slowing down in terms of the month-on-month -month inflation. And month-on-month uh, -month actually provides you with an idea of whether the momentum is gaining is, more, is, is gaining or just losing some steam. Now, on top of that, uh, as the governor emphasized, we do not want to see more wage petitions um, coming in through the regional productivity wage, uh, productivity wage uh, board. Because right now, there have been... Uh, five regions where petitions for higher minimum wage have been filed. In fact, for Region 4A, they have already approved a 16 peso and 50 centavos uh, adjustment in the minimum wage effective April of uh, April 28, 2018. And then petitions were also filed in Region 6, 7, 11, and NCR. 
of course, the, um, the, the hearings are still to be set. We also do not want to uh, see more transport sector uh, groupings uh, among the jeepney drivers, bus drivers, uh, UB Express, and taxis petitioning for higher uh, transport fare on account of uh, some inflation expectations that um, in inflation may be out of control. Now, a, as the governor emphasized, a timely uh, action on the part of the uh, uh, Banco Central uh, may be expected to address those inflation expectations that would have otherwise uh, uh, resulted in higher inflation expectations and more petitions for higher wages and higher transport fare. We don't, we don't want uh, inflation uh, uh, momentum to gain more. Yes. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Sigfrid Delegat of Bloomberg, uh, two items, sirs. Uh, first is, may we confirm that the new overnight facility rate is 2.75? Um, because the wording in the statement just says, uh, we're raised likewise accordingly, just so uh, we get the right number. Yes. 2.75. So basically, we move the corridor. The corridor. The whole symmetrically. corridor. The walls, the hallway, <laughs> everything. Okay. And then the second item is, how will the BSP's decision to hike rates affect its plans to further uh, refine other tools such as the term deposit facility and further cutting down of banks' required reserves ratio? Thank you. On the TDF, so um, the expectation is uh, with the corridor shifting, the TDF is a, a weekly auction that's being run, run now. And it is uh, driven by uh, supply and demand conditions in the very short end of the money market. So in that sense, um, the TDFs will have to respond to uh, the prevailing conditions in the money market at the time. Now, um, you ask about uh, other kinds of changes. You know, uh, the BSP is always looking for opportunities for reforms in the financial system, including further refinements in the way our money mar our open our uh, open market is conducted so refinements of the interest rate corridor system this is something that we are studying and once we're ready to uh, make uh, refinements then we will um, engage the public uh, in due course for about those things you also ask about the reserve requirement uh, although that's not really our topic today because as we have uh, previously clarified to us, the reserve requirement is, uh, if, if ever we decide to move it, that's an operational adjustment. It is an improvement in the way we conduct monetary policy, and our movements there are meant to be policy neutral. Now, if you want to change policy as we are, uh, the stance of policy as we are changing today, the vehicle for doing that is this, this announcement on the interest rate policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Uh, just a quick question, if you could lay it out concretely, how will raising interest rates ease inflation? Uh, because see, si Secretary Pernia earlier said that it's not the answer to inflation. Inflation expectations is the... Uh, today, most uh, important channel of uh, monetary policy. And to the extent that uh, the announcement today of a 25 basis point increase in the policy rate of the BSP will help uh, uh, arrest any possible disanchoring of inflation expectations. That will uh, uh, provide some tempering of inflation moving forward. That's one. Two, um, with the inflation adjustment, by uh, interest rate adjustment with 25 basis points, uh, we also announced our um, uh, forecast for 2018 and 2019. The 12-month ahead forecast um, will, is expected to provide some anchoring on inflation expectations. 
and the, on, on the basis of our study, uh, this 12 month ahead forecast uh, will have a very good uh, impact on inflation uh, moving forward. So to that extent, uh, we expect um, ex inflation expectations to be tempered, number one, and then two, uh, for the inflation forecast to be translated into better inflation uh, expectations. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yes. The, uh, the rate I can also help the exchange rate, although that's not the main reason why we move, we move our policy rate. As you know, uh, the, the peso also has an impact on, especially on imported costs. Hi, golf follow up question. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, do you think there was any miscalculation from the end of the government or from your end on how prices, how you view the uh, inflation or the impact of the train on prices, given that there had been um, well criticisms from the Senate and the public that prices have risen faster than what was initially uh, estimated. Uh, uh, would you say that uh, well, this move was a bit late, or you're doing some catching up. If you look at the different commodities and services, um, <clears throat> either directly or indirectly affected by uh, the train, you will see that um, while Headline inflation continues to increase from 4.3 to 4.5 March and April. The impact of direct and indirect, <clears throat> uh, the, 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 the direct and indirect impact of the train on inflation has been stable, which means that there is some so-called unexplained factors behind the continuing increase in headline inflation. What are these? Now, <clears throat> if we recall, and um, many of you uh, have been covering uh, these uh, press conferences for years, especially Claire. Um, we assumed less than $50 a barrel for uh, 2017, 2018, and 2019. That was in June of last year, at the time that the train was being discussed uh, uh, <clears throat> in the public in public forum and also in the uh, in, in Congress, both in the Senate and in the House. Now, in the August meeting of, uh, of, of, of the board, again, this is on, on, on record, we assume around $51 per barrel, also for the three, uh, same three years, 2017, 2018, and 2019. And then in the last meeting of the board, December of 2017, we increased our forecast to around $53 for 2017, which was the emerging actual average for Dubai for the same year, 2017. But uh, for 2018 and, and 19, we assume a higher average of around $58. Today, oil prices are hovering more than $70 per barrel. This is the reason why oil prices went up much higher than expected because it was very difficult to forecast the geopolitical tension that would, be, that would explain the significant increase in oil prices. And we all know that uh, oil prices have a very pervasive effect on inflation uh, across different commodities and services. So that's one very important reason. The second very important reason is rise prices. In February of 2017, NFA came out with the announcement that it was running uh, short of supply. Uh, well, to me, uh, this is uh, not exactly true because uh, in many other parts of, uh, of uh, the islands, we have enough supply. And, you know, um, NFA accounts for only, what, 5, 6, or 7 percent of the total supply of rice in the in the economy. We have commercial rice 
and we also have rice produced by the households. And this is also part of uh, the total supply. And because of that announcement, we saw a very, very big spike in rice prices until today. And you know, rice in the 2012 basket accounts for 9.6% of the total, from 8.9% in the 2006 basket. So those two are very important, uh, important reasons why uh, oil uh, inflation went up much higher than originally expected. Now, if we work on the 4.5% for April of 2017 and try to uh, remove the impact of uh, rice and, uh, and, 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 and oil beyond what was, uh, what was originally assumed, you will see that uh, for, 4 .5 for the uh, in, for April inflation, you will have a much lower actual inflation for April of less than 4%. And this is also true for the entire uh, for the entire forecast of 4.6% for 2018. Let's not. I think uh, we should have that, this uh, uh, medium-term perspective with with respect to uh, the trade. <laughs> okay. Are there any more questions? Okay. Sir, if I may, I have a phone-in question from Beijing. Uh, Dax Lucas is actually watching us live right now. Will the BSP continue its policy of allowing time deposit facility yields to rise going forward as it has since mid-February? TDF, sorry. Time deposit facility. Sorry. Time deposit facility. Term. That's term daw, ah. Time term deposit facility yields going forward as it has since mid February, or does the BSP feel that longer dated yields are now at the appropriate level? It's basically a market uh, driven process, and you know for monetary policy to work, uh, what the BSP has control over is basically the the very short term rates. And the natural course of things is that the short-term rates affect the rates along the yield curve. So that's the natural progression. So it's not a question of uh, whether we want to raise it or not. So it, it, is, the it is the consequence of uh, what we're uh, trying to do here. And it's going to be market-driven. Okay. No more questions. If there are more no, if there are no more questions, this ends today's press briefing. Thank you and good day. We have simple Miranda for you in the back. Thank you, Governor Espinilla and Deputy Governor Gunigunda. Well, thank you very much for your uh, participation.